I'd have to say Kelly Ray. Although I'm sure it was more surprising for him getting along with me. I think there's this mis misconception that me and my brother are, are arrogant. This story is not true because this person didn't really, you know, you say, like when people say, ah, you never suffer, you never do this, you never do that, even though you don't know the people. My name is Oseloka Osi Mbadiwe. Yes, <laughs> that's my that's my granddad. Um, obviously, my brother Ozzy in the house. Ozzy, I don't. I think a lot of people don't know that Ozzy too stands for Ozumba. So my, my brother was named after my granddad. So we're just here trying to carry on his legacy. You know, in my family, legacy is very important. Doing things that would leave a name long after you you've gone. After you've gone, you know, my granddad died in 1990. People are still mentioning his name today. People sing songs mentioning his name. Chris Brown and David O, the last one. So to us. Wealth is legacy, it's not financial and stuff like that. So it's very important. That's why me and my brother try to carry ourselves the way we do. Because to try and maintain that kind of pedigree and legacy. Look, I'll tell you, I remember when that song um, first came out. I was getting tagged in on Snapchat, Instagram. Every time the song was playing, like somebody I know would, would tag me in there. It was, it was amazing. Um, me and my brother even did a small video with Ricardo Banks. The song brought us um, closer as well. It kind of became a theme, um, theme song for for me and my brother and my family members as well. My dad was gassed when he heard the song. He was like, these are signs from God. How can somebody just come and give us this kind of free promotion? We didn't even ask for it, nothing like, he doesn't believe in coincidences. He believes in things occur the way they're supposed to occur. So like, shout out to Ricardo Banks and shout out to that song. He's followed me and my brother ever since. A lot of the fights I witnessed in the Big Brother house were extremely pointless. That's why I used to, I used to call us the explaining house. Every day, you just look in the corner. Once you see somebody doing hand movements like this, they were explaining that, look, that thing I said, you took it the wrong way. I think somebody asked me this question in, in one of my diary room sessions and I didn't have an answer at the time. But since I've been out and I've just been hearing, I need to wait for everybody to come out and do their media rounds. So if you can ask me this question in two weeks, I'll be able to give you a well-rounded answer because the kind of things I've been hearing people talk about like you know um, I really can't tell you like there's lots of people that I wouldn't trust as much as I trusted in the house put it that way I, I can't give you a name specifically sorry I won't have mentioned them anyway but thank you um, I, I prefer to be their friend than to be their pair if that makes sense I, I wouldn't have minded being um, or I wouldn't mind being paired with Tofa you know, I think me and him would have had a good dynamic and I think it would have been interesting for people to see they didn't, we had an auntie and niece dynamic with Ndine. We didn't have an older brother slash younger brother dynamic on the show. I think it would have been interesting for people to see my relationship with him evolve, the type of things we talk about and the way I would guide him and the way I would learn from him. Things like that. Yeah, Tofa. When you said you were not going to mention the Checkers girls, mm -hmm. is there a specific reason? No, they were my... It's not, there's no reason, but people... People have created this narrative around the Checkers girls for whatever reason. So in my mind, I'm like, <laughs> I felt like that's where it would have, it would have headed. That's why you, you said about on the Checkers girls, but I saw them better as friends. If you don't mind me asking, mm -hmm. what narrative? What narrative? There seems to be this narrative that there is more than friendship from the Umbadiwe twins with the Checkers um, sisters. And I can tell you, both of them were sitting down here. They're the ones that would dispel that narrative. They know that we're just friends and everything else is is um, speculation. I think there's this mis misconception that me and my brother are, are arrogant or we carry ourselves in a certain way where we can have influence on people and things like that, which I don't believe. I feel like if you're around us, if, if you have influence, you're not supposed to, influential people don't need to sell their influence. People just look at them and whatever reason, maybe their aura, maybe they, the way they carry themselves, the way they handle things, people just respect them and look up to them. I want to do, like, I want to emulate them, I want to follow them. I don't know if on the camera that aspect was being shown, but in the house there was that kind of, um, what do you call it, there was that kind of energy going around and also, you know, um, we're also, we can be serious, but we can also, as you saw in the house, be very playful and not take ourselves too seriously. I think when you can be like that, it makes it easier for people to come to you and then it seems like maybe you have influence or you're controlling things and people can interpret that as arrogance or whatever, but um that's not the case at all you know me i was the calmest cat in that house you know like uh, i don't know if anybody got on my nerves uh, let me see 
I mean, someone had to annoy you. It was not necessarily people that used to annoy me, it was things, you know. Can I elaborate on that? Yeah, sure. So, me, I'm a fair guy. I like structure. I like organization. It doesn't have to be over-organized. That's, that's the kind of, that's the way I, I operate. I'm also aware, like, for, for instance, me, I'm a big guy, you know, I, I'm, I'm strong as well. So there are some things that if there's no fairness and structure, like, there'll be no, the, the equilibrium in the house would have been chaotic. For example, you see situations where Biggie would open the storeroom bless us with some alcohol and things like that. Instead of people, especially in the beginning, actually you're going to count the bottles and be like, oh, hey guys, let's share this fairly. You see people going in there, stealing two or three bottles, trying to run away, hide. Things are considered to be very, very childish because I'm like, if me and my brother go in the storeroom, for example, and take eight, eight bottles, then there's nothing for anybody and nobody can do anything about it. Same thing with food, etc., etc. So little things like that used to irritate me and I'll just have to be like, I don't want to argue with these guys, so let me just let it go. But other than that, um, not really, I was cool. You know, I brushed things off easily. Even the fight I had on Saturday, brushed off. Uh, those kind of things can't take me off my game. So there is no, you know, person, there's nobody on your, in your mind that, oh, this particular person has something against you, but I, I just want to be cool about it. There's nobody at the top of your head. Honestly, I feel like when people watch me on my media rounds, they will be, they might, they might not understand like where I'm coming from. In that house, it was very difficult to get on. I didn't, I, I didn't have any issues with anybody in the house, to be honest. At least at face value, you know. Now that I've been out, I can see a lot of people used to do some snickering and whispering, and they're the ones that had problems with us. I didn't have any problem with anybody, so there was nothing that um, there was no particular person that really got on my nerves. That in, in that aspect, like I said, it was behavior, it was like selfishness, not considering other people. Some people being unnecessarily lazy, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, those type of things. I'd, I'd have to say Kelly Ray. Although I'm sure it was more surprising for him getting along with me. I can get along with anybody, but I feel like there was a, a challenge of like, it's when, when, when people look down on someone, that's when there's a crime because you can easily, like it's an unfair comparison for you to raise yourself up and look down on people. But sometimes people don't realize that the, the opposite is just as much of a crime. I call it looking up at people. You don't know somebody, but you've elevated them in your mind for whatever reason. And then you use that to judge the person, interpret whatever they're saying. Maybe they tell you a story, you think, ah, um, this story is not true because this person didn't do it. You know, you say, like when people say, ah, you never suffer, you never do this, you never do that. Even though you don't know the people. So I thought that that might be a challenge. I felt a little bit of some of that energy in the beginning, but we were able to clear it up. And the, the way I was, I was able to clear it up, or the way me and my brother get through situations like that is by not taking ourselves seriously, by just opening up, cracking all kinds of jokes and being accessible. So people realize that coming to talk to me is a safe space. So initially I was surprised, but then I, I thought me and him got along um, nicely towards the end. Actually not towards the end for the whole of the show. I have to see how he feels about that when he comes up. Okay, it was dynamic for me because it encompassed so many different things. There were ups, there were downs. I found myself doing things that I never would have done. Um, I found myself, you're, even though you're not looking at the cameras all the time, you're aware that the whole continent is watching you. So anything you say or do, you're kind of giving yourself, you're opening up yourself to, to, the, to the continent. So there was that. Um, the way I, I ended up being perceived in the house, you know, in my own natural space, I'm not always the oldest person. You know, I'm usually hanging around with people that are usually my age mates, uh, much older than me, much, much older than me. Sometimes people that are younger than me. So you never know if you can be good at that role. But in the house, like I said, people were organically coming to me with problems, issues, that kind of thing. So them feeling like I was somebody they could trust. Um, genuinely, when I'm talking to people and giving them advice or having good conversations with people, like my dopamine levels genuinely increased. I, I found that I like to be in that, in that role, especially if I say something and they follow through and they come and tell me oh, what you said or what you did made sense. Um, the fact that I got to do such an amazing challenge with my twin brother, my best friend, obviously I couldn't have asked for a better experience. All the sponsor tasks, getting introduced to some brands, everything. That's why I say dynamic. It had everything for me. I would make my boundaries a lot more clear than they, they like than what I'm seeing now with the guys and the girls. There's some people that would have been like more standoffish. Some of my friendships in there, I would have been a bit more like, look, we're friends, but this is this, that, that. You know, I wasn't as stern as I could have been in the house. And that's why certain narratives were created and people are asking me certain questions about certain people. Hi, my name is Osi and I just finished answering questions from Zikoko. 
very, very interesting um, interview. I had fun, but um, it's a serious business. So now that I've finished my Big Brother um, experience, which I'm grateful for, it's time to move on to the next phase of my life. So the next phase of my life, first of all, is going to be, um, you know, obviously I'm moving into fatherhood at some point. So that's going to be, take up a lot of whatever I'm doing. Um, me and my brother were already in the entertainment space, so we're going to look to carry on doing things there. We have a movie coming out um, soon, um, so look out for that. Um, we also talked extensively about wanting to do what we call legacy building projects, work with governments, NGOs, um, leadership initiatives, tourism initiatives, anything that can boost, develop our community, our nation, and um, our continent. So I'm just waiting for my brother to come out so we can strategize fully and try to take over the world. Thank you guys.